let's jump right into chat that I know you guys will absolutely love because I don't stop talking about this shit all the time. But this is courtesy of Groom Magazine and something that I'm absolutely gutted about because I just just recently got my holiday dates confirmed um, for New Year's Day or New Year's Eve. I was meant to go away between the months of like the 1st and the 6th or something. I think from like the 6th or the 1st or the 6th I was meant to go away. It's from the uh, the first to the yeah the first to the yeah the first to the six I was meant to go away actually right so I'm meant to have a massive bonanza New Year's Eve celebration loads of alcohol loads of extracurricular activities you know loads of substances and all that stuff and really getting down and having a good time and I was planning to go to Berlin to go to my first club Sylvester in Bergheim. But that's looking like it's off the books now at the moment when, when it comes to this development courtesy of the world famous Groove magazine. So again, this is unconfirmed, especially when it comes to the Bergheim side of things. So don't believe what I have to say with this. But considering what they're talking about and considering what's going on over there, this may spell the end for the future bookings of Bergheim. But I'm hoping that's not the case. It says the following. Berlin clubs soon will only have capacity for 50%. It says here, um, due to the current coronavirus situation, the Berlin Senate is reacting to the news and the state press conference it was announced that saturday november 27th berlin clubs will only be allowed to open their doors with the capacity of 50 percent the hygiene rules are expected to the 2g model although the mask requirement has not been decided so all those clubs that he went to a couple of weeks ago which i'm again super grateful i've got the opportunity to go to Berghain as soon as the Berg, as soon as the pandemic kind of end mm, as soon as the lockdown restrictions were somewhat ended and people from abroad could travel those places, I'm glad I did. Um, I'm glad I was able to experience that city again and, you know, soak it all up, tip people, have fun, eat, be merry, meet some of my old friends and whatnot. That was great. But I'm really sad and really kind of, you know, um, heart goes out to all my friends and people that I know who live there and our residents over there because this must be heartbreaking. Um, and it says here there will also be no full capacity at concerts. A situational decision should be made here depending on the capacity of the venue. The 2G model also applies to bars and pubs with this restriction in operation for various clubs in the capital. It is unlikely to be economically viable. And that's the major, major part to take away from this, economically viable. And I think that's the thing that's really worrying, right? These guys, for the most part, I'm not sure when lockdown ended for them, but I'm sure it's not too, I'm sure it hasn't been too long. They had lockdown for a while. Clubs and bars weren't allowed to open for a long time. They had all that outdoor dining stuff going on. Obviously, when it gets cold in Berlin, it's cold. It's maybe colder than here. Um, I think anyone that's been to parts of, you know, that side of Europe, even Central Europe would attest going there, you know, between the months of like September and January is like brutal. Um, so obviously those kind of, um, you know, initiatives with the outdoor dining and outdoor drinking all this sort of stuff doesn't necessarily work or beer gardens is a little bit hard to do in those kind of cities and of course a city especially like berlin it kind of fries off of its club and bar culture so to take that away was brutal they're just about to get their feet under the table they're just getting started again just getting re um they obviously as you've noted from my podcast they take that sort of stuff really seriously they're from the bouncers to the door pickers to the event bookers to the to the bar backs to the cloakroom people the people that work behind the bar whatever right club life or bar life or hospitality in general is a very serious business in berlin so the fact that they're going to be reduced to 50 percent capacity probably means a lot of places are probably gonna have to close they're just gonna have to say you know what we can't do this anymore this is not viable they're already struggling as it is because you have to remember too they're open at 100% capacity, but it doesn't mean people are willing to go there 100% capacity, right? Some people have been permanently scarred and disillusioned and put off from the entire pandemic and just don't want to be in crowded places whatsoever. Or some people are superstitious, whatever, right? Some people have basically moved on from that kind of lifestyle because they've got other interests. So I'm sure a lot of these restaurants, bars and clubs have basically been struggling this entire time anyway. It hasn't been all sunshines and rainbows for them. So the fact that they have now have to kind of go through this again i just have all the sympathy in the world and i just can't imagine how kind of difficult this must be you just got started you just got going again and then suddenly they're pulling the freaking cord and the reason why i say they're pulling the cord is because this was confirmed courtesy of resident advisor that the world famous cyanide uh, party that if you know you know if you're familiar with berlin you know about this collective and the parties that they put on especially because of their usually stacked lineups they were meant to have a really amazing 26 hour weekender 20, yeah basically plus right they were meant to have from monday basically oh shit it's from friday to monday even longer than that right from 11 p.m to 6 a.m monday they were meant to have an entire weekend of going on with a whole bevy of people associated with cyanide playing and they've had to completely cancel it 
they're not even trying to rehost it somewhere else like military capacity because effectively you can still put an event because it's not going to be with face masks because imagine putting an event on indoors half capacity with a face mask that's just too depressing it's maybe more depressing than those play graves that was happening back in the day early on in the pandemic with people dancing in the hula hoops you remember that to be such a distance they were dancing in the hula hoops and stuff to comply like honestly people were doing some mad shit to party but sign out weekend uh, has been cancelled the one coming up this weekend for the 26th of November the announcement on the version of Advisor events page says as follows Dear Ravers, the instances the instances are increasing and as you may have noticed, the Berlin Center has also decided that from Saturday on was two G plus and the occupancy rate of fifty percent will apply. Two G plus was a standard for us in the beginning. We had communicated this when we put the event online, but we were convinced that it what it, it worked out but but sorry, we are convinced that it makes no sense to hold a techno party with an occupancy of fifty percent. And you can imagine too, the kind of people that go to a Sinoid, the kind of people that go to a possessions the kind of people that go to all these kind of trendy techno parties at the moment or kind of you know hardcore parties right can you ever imagine him trying to put an event like that with only 50 percent occupancy it just doesn't make any sense right there's no there's no sense it doesn't it won't work the vibe completely goes and it kind of takes away from the beauty of those kind of parties so it makes complete sense that they're doing it but also like this sort of line they said here furthermore we believe that we are morally obligated to obtain contain this further spread of covid19 and to avert the overload of the healthcare system now this is all well and good but i think again it's somewhat virtue signally and also it's not a reality of like day-to-day -day life because i think what ended up happening was that as you saw in the beginning of the pandemic right when if when things were at their worst when people were seeing videos and clips of people in parts of you know developing countries or third world countries whatever you'd want to call them not being able to kind of stem the flow of covid and the deaths and whatnot piling bodies up in open morgues and open you know whatever it may be because other places were full and just terrible terrible sites kids on ventilators people were running away to go and party in places like mexico colombia um southeast asia some parts of europe like you know i think it was zurich or something people were going to play graves on a regular basis people were hosting illegal underground techno parties warehouse raves whatever they were doing everything under the sun to keep on from raving and some people see a source for selfish myself included i was talking about it quite often then it came to a point where i stopped caring about that shit because it because i got disillusioned with how the government was dealing with covid right the pandemic response was pretty terrible i felt the continued repeating of kind of um um the, the kind of the continued pre the continued approaches they kept doing right every time there was an issue with covid in institute mask mandate institute lockdown there was nothing else to do in terms of trying to stem the throw of it understand what cases mean versus deaths all this sort of stuff right just the only way to kind of go about it was to limit people's freedoms and to make people put masks on that's it but we've seen so far it doesn't work in the long term it works some way right it's, it's like a kind of joint collaboration it's like how everyone was saying about us um washing our hands washing our hands plays some part in obviously limiting covid but you also have to make sure you you know don't touch things too much cover your face socially distance all this you got to put other things into place be vaccinated these things all add to it as a building block but for whatever reason the government always thinks every issue is a fucking nail and they're the fucking hammer and it clearly isn't a point so i think for me even i was disillusioned so for the people that don't mind again i didn't go to these warehouses or these playgrounds but some people did go and those people went at the height of COVID. So I think now where people are really COVID fatigued, they're really pissed off a bit and just don't want to talk about it no more. They want to move on with their life, want to continue living their lives as much as they can. When things like this happen, I don't think it really stops most people. I think if you really want to rave, you're going to rave. You're going to make sure you go to a party. You're going to make sure you can go and hang out with people and get fucked up. You're going to do it. I've had plenty of friends in my social group doing this thing where in the pandemic, especially during the, the kind of middle of the lockdown where it wasn't really looking too good and we didn't really know if we were ever going to get out of it, especially as it was approaching the Christmas months. I know a lot of people were kind of doing the thing where they'd kind of buy loads of drugs as a group, buy loads of drinks. They'd have like a little DJ control thing that I have and they'd go to uh, and they'd go book a flipping Airbnb somewhere in a really great place. Place, right and just go and get fucked up over there that's what most of my friends are doing for the entirety of their lockdown and they maybe do that maybe every weekend or maybe every month just to kind of unwind and un, you know yeah just kind of unwind in general and kind of mix up the scenarios or, or the sceneries a bit that's what people are doing so i can only imagine what people are going to be doing now where they're really really covid fatigued so i can only extend my kind of 
the deepest condolences to everybody associated with the nightlife scene over there in Berlin because it's going to be a dark, dark time for you, man, for the next couple of weeks or maybe for the next couple of months, especially with these rates as they go. Because what we've always seen with COVID, it seems like whenever a lockdown or a mandate or restriction gets put in place, it's usually a reflection of how high the rates are, the cases or the deaths are. So those numbers don't go down quickly. It feels like after that, they're probably going to institute further restrictions further mandates further whatever and then you're going to get to a point where maybe you know no clubs will reopen again until maybe january maybe february maybe march it's like oh yeah yeah man oh yeah yeah but again selfishly i'm thankful again i can't go of course um in new year's eve but again like i said forget about me man people that work in that industry who just got their feet under the table who are just getting back to sub semblance of normality are now getting pulled right back into this kind of miserable life i just can't imagine how bad it's going to be man but again prayers up hold your head up guys um don't be dis what you call it don't be discouraged and hopefully it goes well hopefully the burger thing also isn't as bleak as i'm making it out to be because i have heard news that some people said that allegedly the actual the actual occupancy of Bergheim is somewhere around the thousands or something no five thousand or something i think in total if that's true including all the rooms I, i'm guessing but what's actually happened is that they've always been open now at the moment at some sort of reduced capacity it's never been fully opened so if they say 50 percent, they can retool the numbers to make it not seem that much of a problem suppose it's what i've read i'm not sure if that's true if that is the case then fair enough it's gonna be open but i guess we have to wait for the official word from those guys when that comes along if that comes along whatever we'll definitely hear about it but yeah what can you do man what can you do